Um, so I just kind of want to walk you through some of my updates and just kind of talk about some of the things that I've noticed as far as undervolting goes and the different settings that you can change. So uh, like my previous video, I'm still using throttle stop. I think it still offers like the best variety of options for you to change the different settings and kind of really tweak it and make it your own thing. Um, I was kind of messing around with this last night and I, I don't know if you guys have watched any of my other videos uh, with the kind of thermal comparisons for different games, but um, something I've noticed consistently throughout those videos is that whether you have it factory settings with no undervolt or you have like full turbo, full GPU, full everything with an undervolt, no matter what that is, whether it's like right now I was using like negative 99.6 millivolts uh, versus uh, in some of the earlier videos, it was like negative uh, 120 something, I think. Um, but the thermal difference between them was very minimal. If anything, I think it was about one to three degrees difference uh, with the undervolt, which is kind of disappointing to be honest with you. Um, a lot of systems that you undervolt, you actually see significant decreases in temperatures. Um, in this particular one, I just don't think that's the case. But um, what I've found does offer the best thermal change is turbo settings, like the turbo boost uh, frequencies. And I'll, I'll kind of talk about that here in a second. But uh, I was playing around with it last night, and I turned the undervolt off. Uh, well, I watched the, the thermals for the CPU just idle, and that may or may not be a good indicator, but uh, I watched the thermals at idle with the undervolt set at negative 99.6 millivolts. And then I, after about 30 minutes to an hour of just having it sitting idle at that, I turned the undervolt off so I just went back to factory and then I disabled turbo kept the turbo boost disabled and with that the thermals were practically identical which was really odd um I mean not that odd because like I said you haven't I haven't really noticed much of a difference in the gaming videos um if anything I think an undervolt with this system may just help with the thermal throttling uh, and, and not in a big way. I think in the videos, the FPS was a little bit more stable with the undervolt, but not enough to make a big difference. So I think that I'm gonna launch a game here with the undervolt set and then we'll see the FPS and the, the thermals and then I'll launch it again with the undervolt not set and just turbo disabled and we'll see if there's a significant temperature di difference, but I really don't think that there is. Um, that being said, before we get into that, let's just go ahead and look at throttle stop again here. Um, I'm not gonna go over how to do the entire thing again. Uh, for that, you can watch the initial video, but um, some of the changes, uh, I did set up four different profiles. Uh, this is more just so I have a quick swap for the videos that I've been putting out. Um, so for the first one, I have it set to negative uh, ninety nine point six millivolts for both CPU core and cache. Um, that's just the undervolt setting and the under sort undervolt uh, value. And then uh, I keep turbo disabled on on that one. And then um, on the second profile, and and I don't really I didn't do this for any reason. Like I know that it says performance over here, game, internet battery um i just set them up how i'm gonna remember them so it doesn't really matter uh for number two this is the undervolt with the custom values custom frequencies for the turbo sets um i've been putting out the videos at 40 39 you know just going down one per core i don't think that really makes a huge difference because it's when you look at your processor frequency when it's running and it's trying to turbo up, it only turbos, it only shows you that turbos up to the lowest core that you have. So I'm only seeing turbo up to 3.5. I think for better consistency and better um, stability, I would probably say stick with like 
a, a solid number with all of these. I don't see that this helps at all. Um, but, you know, to each their own. Um, I do think a good frequency for the turbos, uh, turbo boost is like 3.5, uh, either 3. Point, between 3.2 and 3.5. I think that's a really good middle ground for thermal performance, gaming performance, and uh, just overall stability. Um, as you go too much higher than 3.5 and you still are, you're still going to start really seeing that heat jump up. You're going to see the fans just jet engine. And, uh, I mean, if you're wearing a gaming headset or just a headset in general, that's fine. It'll drown out a lot of the sound, but for, I think for some people, including myself, getting this system, you don't want to just think about gaming with a headset in your room you know by yourself you want to think about taking it out in public and being able to use it for a majority of your different uh even like for business i mean you you want to be able to use this without having to worry about an obnoxious fan noise in public whether you're out uh, at a coffee shop or you know in a work environment you can't just have a jet engine fan going 24 7 so that's where throttle stop and really adjusting these turbo settings are really coming to play. Um, of course, you can have one profile for gaming at home and another profile for when you go out and about. Or, um, and and that would help just as a one-click solution. It's, it's really nice. Um, third profile, that's undervolt with full turbo, just letting it go full tilt just with the undervolt. And like I said, really haven't noticed much of a difference at all with with using that versus using this profile here this is without the undervolt full turbo so um anyway that's that's really the only changes i've made to that uh still using msi afterburner to keep that uh profile set for my gpu i lock it in at like 14 it goes up to like 14 20 megahertz um i find that that works really well keeps thermals down and doesn't diminish game quality at all um if you feel like you aren't i've seen some comments if you feel like you're not getting the frame rate that you want then i would start to play around with increasing this or just you know letting your gpu run full throttle but i think you also need to do some research on the games you're playing and see whether they're more gpu or cpu intensive and if they're more cpu intensive then you should probably increase your turbo boost limits uh, if you're limiting them at all and that would get you some more gains in the frame department um and if that still doesn't accomplish it for you then you may want to consider lowering the settings in game but those are really the way that you're going to get more fps if it's more gpu intensive same goes for msi after burn okay so i ran the benchmark using both undervolt no turbo and factory no turbo and the difference between these two is non-existent if we're being honest with ourselves i mean when you watch through this entire benchmark side by side you can see the thermals vary within a one to three maybe one to four degree difference i don't think that's enough to justify an undervolt that being said you could argue both sides of this i mean it doesn't really hurt the system once you have a stable undervolt to keep that undervolt in place but if you're not gaining anything from it is it worth the hassle of going through having to continuously tweak that undervolt setting if you're not gaining anything or in this case you're not losing thermals i don't think so I've personally, I I use uh, DaVinci Resolve to edit my videos, and I've had my system lock up numerous times while using DaVinci Resolve, and I've continued to back off my undervolt settings over and over and over again, and the system will be working perfectly fine, and then days later, all of a sudden, locks up completely, can't do anything to get out of it except hard kill my computer, and even that once i restart my computer sometimes it'll lock up during the boot process because that undervolt's still applied so i really don't think that it's worth undervolting if you're not going to be gaining any benefit from it um i mean i that's kind of a double-edged blade there i mean on the one hand it's great that you don't have to mess around with undervolt on the other I can see where some people are saying, you know, you have to basically gimp a 
$1,700 base model machine that goes all the way up to well over $3,000. It was running 95 degrees Celsius, and that's only because the limit in the, the BIOS is set to 95 degrees, and then it starts thermal throttling to cool itself down. Uh, of course, you can adjust that setting, but that's not the point. The point is, this computer runs hot. This CPU runs very hot. I mean, the cooling in this system is amazing. So I don't have any fears that this is going to overheat, melt, and die. Um, but I would say that, you know, you, you have to you have to really keep that in mind. I mean, I put out the undervolt videos because I want to showcase the difference between the thermals from factory all the way down to gimping it completely with an undervolt with no turbo with a locked gpu to a set uh, set um megahertz so basically just undervolting the cpu and gpu i think where we are with this with this machine if you want it to be cooler then you're gonna have to tweak those turbo boost frequencies that's really the only option you have so um that's not necessarily a bad thing this computer runs absolutely incredible it's really well built. I love the machine. Um, and if, you, if you're if you looking into getting this, I highly recommend it. I think it's fantastic. It's lightweight. It's slim. It's got a great selection of ports. The only thing it's really missing is a micro SD card slot or an SD card slot. Uh, I mean, you can buy a cheap dongle, carry that with you. I know it's a little inconvenient, but I mean, honestly, what you're getting in this package is fantastic. The 99.9 .9 watt hour battery, that's amazing. Um, you know, the cooling system in this, even when it is running at 95 degrees Celsius, it doesn't feel hot to the touch at all. The cooling is amazing. Granted, you're trading off a very loud cooling system for that. But still, it's really impressive that in this thin of a machine that it's able to keep a cool feeling and it's able to push all that hot air out, hot air out and that's really what you want in a thin and light gaming laptop. Um, you know, so is it worth adjusting the turbo settings to keep the system cooler and run quieter in my opinion yes i really do think so um because with the right adjustments to your turbo boost settings <clears throat> you can gain you don't diminish your uh gaming performance all that much maybe 10 to 20 frames per second max loading times you know maybe a couple seconds for launch times of the program itself or the game um, but ultimately you're gaining remarkable, honestly. Um, so that's kind of the update that I have for you guys. I'm sorry that this video is a bit long and that I kind of trip over my words. I should probably start scripting this stuff a little bit better, but, um, yeah, it's an awesome machine. If you're looking in getting the MSI GS66 Stealth or you already have, and you're trying to figure out how to adjust those thermals, uh, and bring the sound of those fans down so it's more manageable then i recommend this box right here in throttle stop this is your answer adjust the turbo ratio limits uh to whatever setting works for you whatever uh, noise is acceptable whatever thermal limits is acceptable i mean um i'd honestly even if the system got up to like 80 85 i think that's acceptable but you know, I wouldn't personally run it at 90 plus all the time or 95 plus all the time just for the longevity of the machine. I think that keeping the thermals in check for long periods of time, if you're going to be gaming for an extended period of time, I think that's just a smarter move for the long term. But that being said, it's your machine. You do what you want to do with it. Um, if you guys do have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comments. I've been trying to reply to everybody that I can. Uh, I know there's a few of you that have been requesting um, Red Dead Redemption 2, um, Rainbow Six Siege, uh, games like that. Unfortunately, I just don't have access to those at the moment, and I'm not really in a position to go buy a bunch of different games, so I apologize about that. As soon as I can get my hands on them, I will, and I'll, I'll put out those videos for you. Um, just real quick, uh, you know, I really appreciate all the support on the channel. Uh, you know, all the new subscriptions, uh, all the likes, all the feedback, it's, it's really helping me grow as a content creator. And, um, 
that's kind of my goal. I just want to grow this channel to help everybody know what they're getting when they're looking to purchase this machine and various other products in the future. So I hope to really expand this into something more. And if you have any feedback or any suggestions, please feel free to put them down in the comments. I read every single one of them uh, and it really does mean a lot. Um, so anyway, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks. I forgot real quickly I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this in there or i'll put this at the end of the video um i forgot in the initial undervolt guide to include how to uh, make throttle stop start when you start up your machine so i'm just going to do that real quick uh, you're going to go to start search for task scheduler run that and then you can make it bigger if you'd like go to task scheduler library and you're going to do create a basic task. Okay, so here you can name it whatever you'd like to. I think throttle stop makes sense. And then you can put a description if you need, you don't have to. Click next, click when I log in or on. Next, start a program. And then you're gonna browse to wherever your throttle stop program is saved. Uh, that's really gonna vary depending on where you saved it. Mine is personally in a different location than you would just like by default so find yours and then <clears throat> you'll click next so uh, mine for example i think is here uh, no it's not let's see documents throttle stop and then just click the application so mine's in documents on my c drive so uh, i don't know if that's where it saves by default i don't think it is but it might be you can save this anywhere you want just make sure you know the path so you can set that as the location click open click next and then go ahead and check this box says open the properties dialog for this task when i click finish and i already have it set up so i'll just open mine and show you you're gonna have this box pop up after you click the finish button you're gonna click just make sure you copy all these settings so run only when user is logged on run with the highest privileges on the general tab then you move over to the triggers tab. It should look like this. Actions, just like that. Conditions. This page is important, so make sure that only yeah, there's nothing here that's checked. Um, uh, that by default, I think this is gonna be like like this. Make sure you uncheck this box and then uncheck this box. So just make sure it looks like that. Settings allow tasks to be run on demand. Nothing else checked, and then okay. And then now, when you launch your computer, it's going to automatically run throttle stop with the last settings you had selected. So uh, when my computer boots right now, it's running this fourth profile with turbo disabled and no undervolt settings. And so, yeah, that's how you get throttle stop to start up when you start your computer. I uh, hope that was helpful, and I do apologize for not having that in the last video. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.